Here's another setup. I've got the same coil right here that I'm testing it with currently, but you can see this is the feedback GDT I'm using. Tried using this as well, something like this works. You know, I can't remember where I got this, but I think I got it from a power supply, you know, so it was probably like some kind of line isolation. These MOSFETs are some old ones I pulled from somewhere. They're, they were surface mount, so I've got them just kind of wedged on there. They're these right here, SUM 110, so they're 110 amp FETs. And they're not particularly fast or anything compared to the uh, Z44N. They've got about half the uh, on resistance. So, you know, it seems like that's really what you're looking for, a very, very low on resistance so these are quicker than the ones I'm using right here at half the on resistance they perform quite well when it comes to uh, you know like pulling hot arcs at continuous wave so this one I built the whole point of this one I was going to make sort of another mini coil uh, so I wanted to make the board a little smaller but there's always some slight differences when I throw one of these together even if they're pretty much the same uh, circuit. I sort of just kind of grabbed this so you see I've got a common choke set up here got the 1k pot on here uh, that's just what I had but basically the same setup but using those uh, MOSFETs. With this coil right here I'm actually gonna put on this circuit. It really wanted a top load you know I haven't quite figured out what it is but without the top load on there the output just gets real, if it makes it start to seem like this voltage divider here when I start moving the knob around it almost makes it seem like the uh, wiper is losing contact or something or it just doesn't work right. Now I've checked this pot and it works fine so adding that top load on there gives it what it needs to work a little better. I'm going to try to make this one dual resonant maybe but that was just kind of strange you know whereas with the other circuit it doesn't you know it's pretty much the opposite. It doesn't really want a top load. I can put sort of a small one on there like this but any more than that doesn't really like it. But at the same time I can put this coil on this circuit it runs pretty similar to how it ran on the other one I get slightly better output on the other one but yeah this one runs about the same but I bet I think I can run continuous wave a little bit more efficient on this one so one common thing with a few of these circuits seems to be simply that the higher I move the coupling the more current I get out of the arcs so it just happened to be so in my last setup. I've got this primary sitting on this little former at just the right height where I found a good balance between, let's just say, voltage and current. If I drop the primary all the way down, I get the highest voltage out, but then I get the least current in the arcs when I pull them. If I move it up a little bit, you know, to where it's at, I still get, yeah, a little bit at, at my target voltage. And at the lower voltage is when I don't see the plasma to free air I can still pull them out and they're hot arc. If I move it up any higher those arcs probably will get a little bit hotter pull a little bit more from the supply but uh, my overall output to free air won't be as impressive. It just so happens with this circuit throwing this test coil on that I had on my other circuit this primary wants to sit a little bit higher to get the same beefiness in the arc so with this particular setup if I run it from around you know 13 14 volt range or so it's more of a purple arc that pulls out a little further and I get a little yellow in it, it eventually you know but that is to say if I was to move the primary up then that's when those arcs get significantly hotter you know they'll get white eventually but again you know at that voltage around 14 or so I'm not going to get anything coming out of my output got this at about let's put it at like uh, 13.5 so yeah, it still just barely triggers it. So all the way up, nah, I need to cut it up a little more. So right there. So you can see these arcs without pulling them. It's pulling a little under an amp, which by the way, I don't know what the field looks like. So yeah, it's got a it's got a decent field. This is actually quite efficient, so this has to do with that on resistance. I'm pulling less than an amp, about 13 volts. I could go 12 or lower but you know again I want that solid voltage on my um, voltage divider you know to make sure I've got a solid voltage across the gates and just keep it there so again with that setting 
these are the kind of arcs that it's pulling. It actually gets sort of hot towards the end. These are more, you know, pur purpley arcs. And if I was to move the primary up, they're going to start turning yellow and white. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what the circuit will pull then, but so when I pull those arcs, you know, we're, we're as per usual going up. It's pulling the current it needs to do it. About five amp. So let me see. Let me put it at like 17. 17 and get a little something out the top. Obviously, you can draw it out. Same deal though, the arcs, uh, yeah, they're not quite, uh, they only do like 15. What I need to do is set the uh, voltage divider just right with it pulsing. So let me do that first. Bring it up so right there it starts going. So then if I cut it up all the way and pulling pulling about an amp. So it kind of goes in and out. There you go. So those are those are decently high arcs. Again, pulling about an amp, pulling those arcs goes up to about five amps. But that's not bad for you know that voltage. 12, 15 volts or so. I mean, a lot of a lot of ZVS drivers do something like that. Arcs be a little hotter. Now I'm gonna run it interrupted. So again, basically same test coil as last time, just a completely new driver. Uh, and this is the GDT I'm using. I'm gonna set it at 24 volts and cut that up. So once I got it going a little bit, you know, I'm just gonna look at the current draw while I'm turning the voltage up on the gates and I'm gonna stop as soon as it starts going which you know really I can hear it I can hear it right about at this point so I've got the interrupter set to give fairly significant arcs or you know fairly significant on time and that's a little more definitive then you have to set it differently if you want it to start outputting at the very, very, very low on times. It's just how it goes per transistor. So anyway, I got it set. Um, and now I can just crank it up. Sort of the same deal as the last one, you know, I have to draw the arcs out, but those are the arcs at 24 volts. You can see basically I'll get more current that way, less voltage. If I move that primary all the way down, the arcs will come out a little bit more. But I've sort of got it locked with some gap there. But again, the same thing happens when you bring your hand out. So you can obviously pull a pretty significant uh, continuous wave arc out also. And at this voltage, this pulls about 4 amps. Yeah, so that's actually not bad, 4 amps with this circuit. This battery is going to kick out doing that because it <coughs> drops it uh, below the cutoff point. but. Yeah, that voltage, you know, you're going to pull some pretty significant hot arcs off of that. I obviously can't do it. All I can pull it is uh, just push it out of free air, but that's not bad. Yeah, just kick this fly out. <laughs> but again, I mean, you know, you can do it with really small MOSFETs. So these, I mean, these, these aren't even warm yet. So you'd have to run that for, 
maybe like a minute or so to get these hot. All right, so here goes this other coil. I've used this a lot in the past. It's getting to the point where I need to rewind it because some of these windings are starting to overlap and stuff, but it still kind of works. So again, this sort of prefer to top load on it, a small top load. But what I've done here is some people want to know, well, how do you make it dual resonant? Well, really just add a series capacitor. So I've sort of ballparked this value here to 50 nanofarad because I've really I've just got a bunch of 100 nanofarad and smaller laying around. Um, 50 is about as close as I can get it right now. I can play around with the top load a little bit probably to get a little closer. But right now it's uh, slightly detuned. With that cap on, I'm going to cut it on to about uh, 20, 20 volts. So at 20, not bad. I'm going to go ahead and put it at uh, 30. You can see at about 30 I can get about, oh, it's about 5 inches or so. Uh, I could probably get about 6 inches to the hand, uh, just tuning around with it a little better. Because, uh, like I said, that was sort of a, a ballpark value, but it's not bad. Let's see. Let's see, we're about 900, about 900 kilohertz with this setup here. You know, just by adding, that's literally all I did, just added this little 50 nanofarad cap there. It's getting a little warm, heat sink is still, that's eh, just barely, just just slightly warm. But I've still just got uh, about 6.8 nanofarad caps on these drains here. Uh, I would normally probably bump that up to about 100 nanofarad, but just haven't done that yet. So real quick, I guess, let me just show how it runs without those caps. So bypass the caps, not a huge difference. You know, like I say, probably got like an extra inch, maybe, maybe inch and a half. So yeah, those are about solid four inch arcs and I was getting about five. So I would imagine if I tweak that a little more, play with the primary, yeah, I probably could get about six inches. Yeah, again, I mean, without any primary capacitor, still runs pretty damn good. I prefer the little extra output I get with it, and I'll probably, as soon as I get some more smaller value caps, probably try to tweak that a little more. Fair, continuous wave with the tank cap on there. I mean, so if I, we're running like 17 volts, let's say. 
only like five amps with this circuit and that top load. And you know, I was pulling it up <laughs> to like ten amps. So I mean even down to uh say about twelve volts, two amps. Don't get about that five amps. So this was pulling probably a little hotter arcs just cut out, but yeah, it was pulling a little bit hotter arcs uh without that. So let me just try again without the cap. Without the cap, get much better continuous wave output, which you know makes sense. So if I cut this up, then pulls a little hotter arcs, which is about the usual. And they're more manageable so you know a simple solution would just be to sort of have a quick way to bypass this uh, sort of like how I have here so I want to play around with the longer arcs that still have some beef in them I just hook the cap up want to run continuous wave put less stress on the driver then I just take the cap off I'm just going to show the here's the 12 volt arc again with the uh, lights down it's about 13 or so So there is a there is a lot of purple in the base of that, but it starts to get pretty damn yellow slash white towards the end there. But yeah, so this is you can't see, but it's pulling seven amps at the extent of that arc. And right now, two amp, let's say two amps as it is, and when I draw push out like that, it goes up to about and you can't see about four amps. But again, you know, I thought this was kind of cool. This is a cool setup because uh, a lot of little ZBS drivers. Oh, shit. Oh, dang. You know what? My phone, I thought my phone broke. My phone did some crazy thing on the screen where it just started going, just look completely ruined. So I'm assuming, and then the video screen came back on and it's still recording. So I'm just going to assume that it still works. I'm not going to get so close again. But anyway, what the hell was I saying? A lot of times ZBS drivers will give you... A very similar output to this at that voltage you know so that's cool that this type of little circuit like this which is it's a little bit more complicated yeah and obviously you got to build your own coil you can't just use a flyback it's cool because you could just draw the same arcs from a top load you know just holding something in your hand um, that you know you probably want to have it grounded anyway but again cool circuit you know it works very similar it's not uh, switching at zero volts unless you get it tuned to do that but uh, even so little setup like this little small transistors like that surface mount deals that these are pretty bootleg on there anyway um, yeah works works decent